quick thing I found out if you're doing a restoration and like me you're missing one of those um, captive nut that helps the hood hinge bolt into the inner fender that's not a part that's easy to find but I found out that these regular square I don't know how they call it it's a type of captive nut but that's widely available at any auto parts store if you look closely that rectangular part here it's captive to that piece around but if you remove it using a grinder that piece that piece here will come off and I already welded it on the other side it's not pretty for now but it is pretty close to the same thing it's really not that far from the original look so yeah use these and just grind out those two little wings here that keep it tight and then you can just pop off that rectangular piece and weld it right into your inner fender two hours of fiddling around we got it pretty close uh, one of the um, captive nuts has come loose the only one that I didn't weld so I'm just going to 
uh, remedy to this situation to tomorrow and that's why that uh, corner here is a bit too far off it will come down actually when uh, when I fix this but for tonight the hood is aligned it's one step further very happy with it close really good too that's it Entire undercarriage before I prime again with epoxy primer, and then I'm going to spray the uh, Raptor bed liner so that I'm bulletproof on the undercarriage and there's no rust that will have any chance of forming in the future. So I have this piece of uh, 220 grit sandpaper wrapped around a um, red scuffing pad. I started this uh, section with the red scuffing pad but the epoxy is so hard that it, after a while it just didn't seem to scuff so um, that's why I'm using a 220 and the, the pad gives this uh, softer surface so that, I, so that I can easily reach those concaves area. Not a very interesting thing to watch but um, it needs to be done.
first coat is uh, done. Uh, I'm only doing one coat because uh, I don't need a full coverage. It's already been covered well enough. This is just to bond the wrapper bed liner. It's going to chemically bond, which uh, is the strongest possible adhesion you can get for that type of, uh, of product. The epoxy primer that I use is called Evo Tech. It's a product that, that's made in Quebec and uh, it's a really, really tough stuff. Uh, they use that on uh, agriculture, uh, agricultural and industrial application. So that stuff is incredibly strong. So I've read the instructions. It's very easy to use. It took me about two minutes. So you have these four 711 milliliter bottles. Um, what you do is you open them. This is the actual stuff. And this is a hardener. It provides you with that cup, which is already indicated with a fill line at 237 milliliters. So what you do is you fill that cup with the hardener. You pour it inside the bottle. There's enough space, uh, just enough space for it to fill uh, up until about here. And then you use the provided Schultz style, uh, Schultz style spray gun and that's it. So second coat is done. It went fairly well. I had a small uh, blockage issue which I think was my mistake because I thought I had um, a leftover on the bottom of one bottle and I tried to put it onto the new bottle and I noticed that right off the bat the bottom of that bottle was uh, starting to uh, harden a little bit and that's probably what caused the blockage so um, I don't recommend you do that just uh, waste just waste the um, leftover in the bottom of your current bottle and just uh, pick a new one other than that it went really well second coat I tried to um, pull the gun a bit further away so I get uh, so I get some 
more uh, uniform texture. Um, if you keep the gun really close, uh, it, it, it self levels a little bit more and you get some more uh, shine to it. Um, you see now why I wasn't really worried about drips when I sprayed the epoxy on. I knew that the texture from the bed liner would pretty much cover everything. So that's a really, really nice finish on the other undercarriage. Uh, I stopped here exactly because the old engine bay area is going to be painted the same color as the car. Originally they would paint it satin black but uh, I'm going the uh, full baller mode <laughs> and painted the uh, same color as the car which will be revealed um, maybe in the next video I don't know so that's it for tonight pretty happy with this it's a big step We got some new goodies from the 69 donor car. Just uh, went ahead and picked up this old 351 Windsor block. Actually, it's a whole engine. It's gonna be rebuilt. And we have these old doors. Um, not because I want to reuse those doors, they're all rotten on the bottom. Um, but I want those racing style mirrors, which are the um, more expensive options as far as mirror goes. Um, this one, the, the lens is broken, but it's, uh, it's replaceable, easy, and uh, mirrors are pretty good shape. So I just need to disassemble this door, get the, all the mirror cables out and then there's not much to do with these doors but um, scrap metal. These are the leaf springs that went on it. We're gonna use those temporarily as the other, uh, my leaf springs were sandblasted and uh, I'm waiting on the correct shims go inside but just to drop the car this weekend we're gonna use those old rusted leaf spring without shims we're now going to lower that engine with an old tractor we're going to pick up that engine those forks on the tractor farmer style Got it. So, as you can see, I have uh, decided to stop the work on the car and spray everything 
with two coats of epoxy primer. Uh, I chose black because it one it looks awesome and um, it also highlights uh, really well any discrepancies in the body filler. I also went ahead and put some bed liner that I had in a spray can on inside the fender wells and I did the engine bay also with uh, epoxy primer so there's still some body filler work left to do maybe five percent but uh, it's it's probably all in the engine bay the reason why i have sealed the whole car right now in uh, epoxy primer is because the body filler is the same as polyester uh, primer filler the uh, primer is literally body filler in spray uh, it's it's really spongy there's a lot of air in it in it and it, it, it will soak any moisture so if I were to leave the car uh, during winter in body filler it would soak up moisture it, I, I don't want to take any chance of uh, body filler fall failing or uh, scaling off in a couple of years here you have the bed liner Looks pretty awesome. It's in a spray can, so it's a bit less durable than the Raptor that I put underneath. But it's that's, that stuff. It's is so strong. There's no way there's gonna be rust or chips or anything in this area. Plus, I have two coats. I have two coats of rust bullets. Uh, rust bullet then I had two coats of epoxy primer and since I had the recoat window of 72 hours uh, was well expired I had to put another coat of epoxy primer followed by two coats of bed liner so yeah you can say that's overkill um, I just want to do that job one time thing is now that we're pretty much ready to drop the car uh, temporarily for winter um, we've had some uh, issues with the differential there's a housing end that was really damaged and I'm waiting on that part so in the meantime we're gonna drop it on a an old axle that was on a very old trailer that's gonna do it for uh, the winter I'm gonna have to touch up these brackets here where we mounted the car on the frame obviously there are two spots in the front two spots in the, in the back that didn't receive um, um, any paint at all so I'm gonna buy some spray cans and um, cover that up once the car is lowered on the ground this was a really strangely warm October day but it's pretty much one of the last this is why I had to seal the car in epoxy because I don't want to be left in a spot where it's, got, it's too cold to continue and I can't seal the car uh, as you can see now the engine bay uh, is not completely finished but it's a lot better than it was uh, I'm gonna spray, I know it's probably overkill, but I want a really good looking engine base. So I'm probably gonna use some um, polyester uh, primer filler in there and block it. I know some of you guys will just think that it's overkill, but yeah, uh, there, there was a lot of work in that engine bay and I, I want it to look really nice. It's really, really looking good. It's really badass. I'm not gonna paint my car in black, but god damn, it's hot. Like, this is actually starting to look like a car, which is, which is nice. So next step is uh, going to be um, lowering the car and I have all of this stuff to basically um, find somewhere to put it I guess since I was spraying epoxy I went ahead and um, took
took out all of these sandblasted parts and put in nice two coats of uh, wet epoxy on it. Those are the um, bucket seats, bucket seats frame. They're really looking nice. These are the original ones. I'm going to restore them. We removed the old um, foam that was stinky and full of mold. Not that rusted. Like there was no real uh, porosity. It was it was just surface rust and dirt. Um, so as you can see here, it is looking pretty nice for an old frame that was sandblasted. Uh, same same goes here with the back seat back seat frame. Um, got some uh, quarter extension fender extensions. My sway bars, front and rear, the spindles that go in the front, really looking nice. So all of this was sandblasted, now it's looking really nice. I really wonder if these are worth restoring. Um, let me know in the comments if you are had any experience in restoring those. They're not, they're really they're in pretty good shape I think for for their area for their age they're in uh, pretty good shape um, but I don't know those those small lines here looks to me like it's uh, not scaling off but doesn't seem like a scratch it seems more like it cracked uh, I, I again I don't know anything about chrome so I don't know if it's polished let me know in the comments if you had any experience in what you would recommend it's not that expensive but it's still one less thing to buy that doesn't mean I won't have any work on the car for the winter all the parts the interior um, that has to be uh, restored I'm probably gonna work on those seats during winter sometime so there's gonna be more content Welcome to Jackass. I remember back in July, I was really hoping naively to paint my car at the latest in October. In hindsight, this was a really stupid thing to do because it was not only an impossible task, but it made everything so much harder. Once you set yourself a deadline without having any kind of experience in that domain, you're just putting a lot more stress on yourself. And it seems the closer you get to your goal, the more details you start to notice and want to correct. So as the months went by, it became increasingly apparent that I wouldn't be able to paint it this year. 
since I'm working outside and all the products that I use have a minimum temperature application of 13 degrees Celsius, we decided it was for the best to wait for next spring. So we sealed the whole car in epoxy primer, dropped it from the rotisserie and called it quit for this year as far as metal prep goes. So we're going to spend this winter resting, refilling our pockets and we're going to work on some interior parts and also order new parts in order to move the car back in spring. So that means control arms, coil springs, disc brake systems and also a rack and pinion conversion system.